Hey internet, this is Jacob Clifford and welcome to my YouTube channel. Assume that you own a business and you're hit with a recession and you have to make a big decision. So your sales are down and you have to cut costs. So should you fire 10% of your workforce or should you keep everybody on and pay everyone 10% lower wages? What you decide to do might save your company, but it could save the entire economy. At this point in unit three, you understand aggregate demand, short run aggregate supply, long run aggregate supply, and you can draw and shift them. And you understand the economy can be in one of three places. It can be at full employment, the natural rate of unemployment. It can have a negative output gap where the economy is doing bad, and there's high unemployment, or it can have a positive output gap where there's high inflation, the economy is overheating. Now for the rest of the unit, we're going to talk about government policies designed to fix the economy. But before we do that, Let's talk about what happens when there's no policy. Something called long run self adjustment. Okay, in the short run, the economy can be in all sorts of places. It can have high unemployment, high inflation, stagflation, but eventually in the long run, the economy will self correct and end up right where it started at full employment. We toys can see That's the vertical long run aggregate supply and the economy is going to end up there no matter what in the long run, even if there's no policy. Let me show you what I mean on a graph. So we have a positive output gap. The economy is overheating. We have very low unemployment. Now, because price levels going up, eventually the wages to workers and resource prices will also go up and that's going to increase the cost to firms. So the short run aggregate supply eventually is going to shift to the left, putting us back in the long run, full employment. C, the economy self adjusts. For a positive output gap, this process happens relatively quickly and economists don't really debate it. But that's not the same for a negative output gap. You remember the question that I asked you at the beginning of the video? So if you decide to cut 10% of your workers, you're gonna produce less output and it's gonna take a lot of time for those workers to get new jobs. And if other companies do the same, these workers are gonna spend a whole lot less and because of the multiplier effect, that's gonna pull down the economy. And that could lead to a deep and persistent recession. But if you keep all your workers and lower all of their nominal wages 10%, that could lower your costs and still keep you profitable. And if other companies do this, then wages and resource prices will fall and the short run aggregate supply curve would shift to the right, putting us back at full employment. But would that happen? Does that happen? That's what economists fight about. Everyone agrees that wages are clearly flexible upward. Higher inflation leads to higher wages. But when there's a recession, economists argue how flexible wages are downward and how long you have to wait for the economy to self-correct. Some people say that wages aren't flexible downward because of unions and contracts and the effect on worker morale. So if wages and resource prices aren't really flexible, the economy would take a long time to self-adjust. But most of the time, we don't wait for the economy to self-adjust anyways because economists and politicians like to do something and use other policies to close the gap. I'll talk about all those in future videos. But going back to the graph, notice when we talk about self-adjustments, we're talking about the short run aggregate supply shifting, not the demand curve. The demand curve isn't moving. So if the economy's at full employment and there's an increase in consumer spending, that would lead to a positive output gap. But eventually, wages and resource prices would increase, so the short run aggregate supply would shift to the left, putting us back at full employment. And if we're at full employment and there's a decrease in consumer spending, that would lead to a recession and a negative output gap, and eventually, over time, theoretically, wages and resource prices would fall, short run aggregate supply would increase, shift to the right, putting us back at the long run. No policy required. But there's one more thing that can happen in the long run. If we have more resources or better resources, the entire long run aggregate supply curve can shift to the right. That means we have economic growth. That's just the same idea as the production possibilities curve shifting outward, and I'll talk more about that in unit five. Now to remind you about how the economy self adjusts in the long run, I'm gonna put this guy up on my wall, but don't go anywhere. We still have two things to do. The first thing, if you like my videos, please subscribe. And if you need help getting an A on your class and rocking the AP exam or your final exam, go get the ultimate review packet. It includes tons of practice and exclusive videos and practice exams. They're gonna to totally help you out. And the second thing we have to do, it's time for a pop quiz. <laughs> The questions are only gonna be on the screen for a few seconds, so pause the video, see how you do, and take a look in the very first comment below for the answer key. And while you're down there, let me know if I should keep the beard or get rid of it. And make sure to subscribe. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.